Let's go over to Shadow Financial Secretary to the Treasury, of course, Labour MP, uh, James Murray. Good morning, James. Hi, good morning. Uh, first of all, could you explain uh, this business of the Treasury Fund originally designed to profit for the Bank of England's quantitative easing, otherwise known as printing money, uh, has turned from a £73.6 billion asset into a £177.6 billion liability in the space of just three years? That is extraordinary. Uh, how has this happened? Absolutely. You know, it is extraordinary. And we know people are already uh, feeling the squeeze across this country uh, under the cost of living crisis. Um, and this is um, another hit uh, on people's finances as a result of conservative economic mismanagement. Now, you know, this dates back to 2013 uh, when George Osborne uh, changed the rules about the Treasury uh, profiting uh, from changes in the uh, asset value. And, you know, that's when it started. It started to get worse uh, under Rishi Sunak when he was Chancellor. Uh, when he was in the Treasury, uh, he said that, or well, the Treasury said there was only a remote possibility uh, of, of there may, being a, a net loss uh, from this whole uh, setup. Obviously, when Kwasi Kwarteng was in the, in the Treasury, uh, things got dramatically worse and a crisis became an emergency. And now, at the end of the day, uh, the British people are, are left paying the price uh, for this conservative economic failure. Uh, I just said, uh, James, uh, uh, yeah. You know, but they, they like to call it quantitative easing. It is, of course, printing bits of paper and calling them money uh, on the basis that if you give people bits of paper and they start spending it, it will sort of reinvigorate the economy. Uh, why has the Bank of England done this uh, to such an excessive uh, state? And also, uh, why is Andrew Bailey still in his job, the governor of the Bank of England? Um, well, look, the Bank of England um, is independent, and we respect its independence. And I think you know that is a really important uh, principle for, uh, for us um, in the opposition. You know what's happened. What the situation we're describing today, though, um, is about a decision taken by George Osborne when he was Chancellor uh, to change the rules so that the Treasury uh, would essentially profit uh, from increases uh, in the asset value um, of the Bank of England's bond fund. Now, that was essentially a one-way bet. You know, George Osborne thought this was a, a, a clever way uh, that he could change the rules um, and he was warned at the time uh, indeed by Rachel Reeves um, and by the Office of Budget Responsibility that this was a very short-term uh, step to take and that things could go the other way if interest rates went up and the asset value um, went down um, and indeed that is coming home to roost now that is what we are now seeing uh, which is that there is now this uh, massive drop in terms of the bank's biggest um, asset becoming its biggest liability in the space of just three years and you know what that means in real terms is it has an impact um, on people across this country uh, because ultimately we end up paying the price. Absolutely. Uh, the Bank of England used to be a symbol of stability, is now a symbol of chaos. I don't know how that happened. Uh, can I uh, also ask you why you're with us, uh, James, uh, your take on uh, the escalating fiasco down in Portland in Dorset, uh, the migrant barge, uh, Bibby Stockholm supposed to take on board 500 migrants by now. They were supposed to start going on at the beginning of the week. Uh, there are exactly 20 people on board right now. The government now saying if the other 480 or so don't get on board, they'll remove government support. I don't know what that means. Uh, to, and what do we do with them if, if there's no government support? Uh, no, you know, they're not on the barge. Where do they go? Etc. Et I mean, the whole thing is a shambles, isn't it? Well, you're absolutely right. The, the, the whole system is in a complete mess. Uh, there's chaos um, in, the, in the asylum system, in the immigration system, and this is chaos uh, which the Conservatives have created and presided over uh, for the last 13 years. You know, what we need to do, ultimately, is get the backlog down. You know, the reason why the government is being forced to use expensive hotels and barges and all of the other places where they're getting uh, asylum seekers to live um, is because the backlog is so high. You know, we need to get that, that backlog down. We need to go after the criminal gangs uh, who are people smuggling people across the channel and get a grip of the system because that's the root cause of all the problems we're seeing. Absolutely agree. Uh, can I get, also get your take, uh, James, on... Uh, yesterday there was a big furor about... Uh, Lee Anderson, the deputy Tory party cha chairman, using extremely colourful language, saying that if these migrants don't like the barge, they can F off back to France. 
Uh, a lot of people taking a dim view of that. I think he's basically talking for the people. I think that's what most people think. Uh, perhaps that's not appropriate language for a politician. I don't know. I can't get too worked up about this. Uh, but this was followed. Uh, I know that she's not actually uh, technically a sitting Labour MP anymore. Uh, she's suspended from the Labour whip. But Diane Abbott, uh, you know, a great stalwart of the Labour movement, uh, subsequently tweeted after the very sad, tragic deaths of 41 migrants off the coast of Italy uh, that these migrants have, there's the tweet, have indeed F offed, uh, they have F off to the bottom of the sea. Uh, that's not appropriate, is it? No, it's not appropriate. And, you know, you're right to say that, that Diane Abbott isn't a member of the parliamentary Labour Party at the moment, so she's not speaking on behalf of the Labour Party. Uh, but I don't agree with those comments. Um, I think it's right that she deleted uh, that tweet. Um, I think, you know, also you spoke about Lee Anderson's uh, comments earlier. You know, I think that after he used that language, he basically got a thumbs up from uh, Number 10 and from Cabinet Ministers uh, saying, yep, that's, that's, that's fine for you to say that. Um, but I think really that the the problem here um, is that using that language, uh, I think, um, is an attempt to distract from what's really going on. Because, you know, they use language like that to distract from the fact that they are completely failing uh, to bring down the backlog, to run an effective asylum and immigration system, and failing more widely on the economy and the cost of living crisis, um, and so on. And that's the, the distraction from that uh, is what does real damage to our politics. And in fairness to Lee Anderson, he did also state, uh, make no mistake, the government is failing uh, on uh, controlling the migrant crisis. I don't think any of us would disagree with that. Uh, a last question. We're going around the houses here, James. Uh, uh, can I ask you what you think about yesterday's shocking TikTok-inspired riot in the middle of London, uh, at the Oxford Circus, uh, when the, uh, there was a call on TikTok for uh, everyone to don balaclavas and hoodies and rob the hell out of JD Sports. Uh, now, I've been calling for the government today to come down on TikTok like a ton of bricks. They should never have allowed that post to go up. Uh, they need to be spoken to and something needs to be done, does it not? You know, I think, I think there's a real question here about the responsibility of social media platforms, you know, because I don't think it's okay for social media platforms to step back and say, oh, it's nothing to do with us, it's just people, you know, posting on our platforms, whether it's TikTok or any of the other uh, platforms. You know, I think social media uh, giants, social media companies need to take some responsibility and, and that's why actually what we need is for government legislation to sort of catch up with the reality of the modern day. I mean, we've been doing the online safety bill in Parliament for what feels like a very long time. There's been a lot of uh, back and forth on it. You know, the government needs to get ahead of this and make sure that we've got those, those rules, those laws, those regulations uh, in place for the world which has changed very quickly in recent years. And is this that last question, Joe? Is this not a sort of horrible symbol of lawless Britain. These mostly young blokes, I mean, they just don't care about the police. It's another example of egregious shoplifting being ignored by the police. Uh, things are falling apart at the seams, aren't they? Well, look, I haven't seen the reports of, of what happened last night. Yeah, have a look um, at the but, video. You, know, the you won't like do... it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll have a look after I get, after I get, off, yeah. uh, the, after I get off air. But, but, you know, like the police do you know, a really important job uh, to, to maintain public order uh, and trust. You know, I know in, in London we need to make sure uh, that the police have the trust of different communities. Um, but, you know, the police do a really hard job uh, and we need to support them in doing that. And they did very, very well yesterday, in fairness to them. And as Big Ben goes off, uh, I wish you... Uh, a lovely day, uh, James, and thank you for talking to us. Uh, that was James Murray, MP, Shadow Financial Secretary to the Treasury. Uh